So, the New York Times is citing polls that show how many voters aren't happy with how President Biden's handling issues from inflation to the Israel-Hamas war and CNN's Farid Zakhari claims that it's time for his, his team to take notice. Take a look. I understand that polls are not always accurate, but in general, they have tended to underestimate Donald Trump's support, not overestimate it. Trend lines are not working in Biden's favor. He needs to do something bold and dramatic and reverse these numbers. The one that troubles me the most is on the question of who was the more competent. Joe Biden led Donald Trump by nine points in 2020, but Trump now leads by 16 points in January 2024. That 25-point shift could be a reflection of people's sense that the president's age is affecting his capacity to govern. And there's very little that Joe Biden can do now to change that perception. Well, what's the point of having a conversation if you're saying it's, it's a done deal? Mm. You, you know, you can't do that. It is not a done deal until the people of the United States vote. That's when it's a done deal. <laughs> but... You know, we have this conversation, what, twice a week? Yes. So, you know the question. What do you think? So, I, I've got to say, I agreed with a lot of Fareed Zakaria's take, and I want to underscore, I want Trump to lose. So, it's important to me, six months out, with this platform that we have to talk about some very real trends in science that Donald Trump may be far stronger than we think he is. It may be hard for us to wrap our heads around. I, personally, someone who's testified against him, has talked about Hunfit. It's hard to believe that he still has as much support as he does. One thing he talked about was the economy. And I was trying to make sense of this because, obviously, he left office in 2020. The economy was in free fall, massive unemployment. But what I think it is is I think a lot of voters attribute the pre-pandemic economy to Donald Trump. They don't blame him for the global phenomenon that was the pandemic. Joe Biden has objectively achieved a lot on the economy. He did the infrastructure package as well. He has things to brag about. But my problem is this. He did an interview with Aaron Burnett, and he said, actually, you're better off than you think you are. That's a bad message. When people's grocery prices are up by 30%, you're saying, believe me, rather than what your bank account is telling you. He's got six months to come up with an inspiring, forward-looking message and get out there and talk about it. And for us, I think it's important I engage Trump voters. And I don't do it to make them feel shamed or to attack them for where they are, but to talk about what a second term could look like and how dangerous it is. I think that's how we need to be using our voices. And the campaign, the Biden campaign just has to get more active. Yeah. Well, I would say when you say the Biden campaign has to get more active, I actually blame the media slightly. We talked last week a lot about how I don't think people are able to watch this Trump trial 24-7, like, all the time. Like, it's a still shot. It's a picture of a door. It's all this stuff. Now, we're talking about we're in a campaign. We should be hearing more. We always say, why don't we hear from the Biden administration? It's I don't leave that all on the Biden administration's door. The media needs to cover things. For example, uh, abortion is a winning issue for Democrats, women's reproductive health. Vice President Harris did an event last week. I couldn't find any coverage on it. And mm. that's a Democrat's winning stance. I also think that um, there was an asylum regulation decided on with the border. Everyone has agreed the border's a problem. Didn't see any coverage on that because um, we're busy watching the Donald Trump door not opening. And um, don't forget Nikki Haley. Um, Her win. Didn't she win? Didn't she? Oh, yeah. She, she got like 150,000. Oh, yeah. 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 But I mean, Both. then also you've Nobody got heard like it. Yeah. last week our incumbent president stepped in to do a speech on anti Semitism. They cut to the speech, came back and talked about Donald Trump. So what's happening here is Donald Trump is Donald Trumping us. It's deja vu from 2016. Yeah. And the coverage, the irony is the people covering that. News thinks they're getting one up on Donald Trump while they're handing him a lot of votes because of the coverage. It's ridiculous. Yeah, I, I've been saying, I agree with you. I've been saying from the beginning, I actually think this trial is somewhat helping Donald Trump because it's keeping him off the trail and because we are not focusing on the stupid stuff he says on a daily basis. And that is, uh, is helping him. On Biden, look, you know, at first it was people saying, we don't like our choices. 
What else? What third candidate? Well, no third candidate, no knight uh, in, in shining armor appeared. Now I'm hearing people say, is there a way that in the convention they can change the candidate? That's not gonna happen. I'm gonna say it till I'm blue in the face. I'm gonna say it till the day of election. This is a binary choice. This is a binary choice America has between good and evil, between decency and havoc, between indicted in 88 counts and not. I mean, you know, they're both old. If that's what's keeping you at night, you don't up at night, you don't have a choice. They're both old, but only one is an alleged criminal indicted in 88 counts. If this is what you want for America. And I know there's a lot of young people who are frustrated. I was with two friends this weekend who are both Biden supporters, have kids who are 19, 20 years old and are telling me, oh, those kids, you know, are not going to vote. Well, if you don't vote because you're issuing a protest vote, you're gonna wake up the day after election day with a lot of remorse if Donald Trump is the president for the next four years. And I'm gonna, you know, and I know that people like me saying this to the kids doesn't work. We have to figure out a way to make it, and maybe you can talk about this, you've got kids that age. But there is not one group that these kids are protesting over that will be in a better place under Donald Trump. Whether it's climate, whether it's reproductive rights, whether it's Israel and Gaza, there is not one group that will be better under Donald Trump. All of us will be a lot worse off. So get off your butts and go vote. Look, I, I, I mean, um, I agree with sort of what everyone is saying. I'm concerned, like Alyssa is. You know, when you look at these stats, it's, it's very clear that Biden is actually worse off now six months um, from the election than Obama was and that and when Bill Clinton was. They had disapproval ratings that were pretty high, but his are even lower, right? So that concerns me. I also agree it's up to the American people. It's not up to the polls. And we are six months, six months away. Mm. Um, I actually do think that the, the criminal trial will matter because 71% of Americans have said if he is convicted, um, I care about it and he should go to jail. Something like 54% of Americans have said if, if he is convicted, I will not vote for him. Well, I think that's very that. important. Don't cover it 24-7. <laughs> yeah, let but us I, know. But I think that, so I think that's important and I think that's why people are paying attention to the trial. But to the Gen Zers, I think the worst thing we can do is tell this gen that generation that they're dumb, that they're yeah. misinformed, that they don't know what they're doing because I am raising two kids and granted it's anecdotal, it's just my house because we talk about politics at home. They are very engaged, they know the issues, they research the issues, they source the issues and they're gonna vote. They are not gonna vote for Trump. They are not gonna vote for a twice indicted, twice, twice uh, four times indicted, twice impeached loser. They are not gonna vote for him because they hear their mother saying it all the time. So I think a lot of this has to do with what's going on in the home, the discussions that, are that people are having in the home, and they need to tell their kids, um, you have to vote, it's your choice, but these are the choices, so, these are the issues. Sonny, and I, I think, and I think that those conversations that, are happening. Um, Joe Biden's never, I don't, I've never heard Joe Biden call the young people dumb and uninformed. But Other attack. people have. Hillary Clinton just did that. She just did that. She spoke down to them. They don't know about this. They don't know about that. That's a bad move when it comes to this generation because when you're saying that these kids at Ivy League schools, the acceptance rate is like 4%. They've worked their entire lives. They're very smart. They're very educated. When you're saying they're dumb, they don't know what they're talking about, that's problematic. You don't talk down to this generation. You speak with this generation. And I think this generation could very well save our In country. general, you also shouldn't shame people and how they vote. This is where I get back to, like, I try to have respect when I talk to, talk to Trump voters as hard as it is with the frustrations I have. But knowing that people vote on a lot of issues and going to them non-judgmentally and talking about what a second term would look like, or with young people, also with the never Trumpers, don't shame them. They'll probably be with Biden, but talk about the stakes. I don't think shaming is a motivator to get people out.